Good morning everybody and welcome to the Football Philosophy Channel. Uh, this is uh, being recorded Sunday morning this evening. United play Brighton at Old Trafford at 7.30. Uh, all the results this weekend really, have, well the, the most important results have gone United's way I think so far this season, uh, this weekend. It feels like we've strengthened our grip on second uh, on second place with, without even kicking a ball. Of course, that doesn't make sense if we don't end up beating Brighton today. But, uh, you know, as we sit here now, it feels like we've strengthened our grip on the second place by uh, Chelsea got beat uh, by five goals to two by West Brom at uh, Stamford Bridge, which was an astonishing result. Uh, they did have a, a player sent off at uh, Chelsea and they played with 10 men for, for about an hour and they were leading 1-0 at the time. But you still wouldn't expect them to collapse like that. And, uh, you know, West Brom have been struggling to score goals all season. Uh, and under Thomas Tuchel, you know, they're really proud of the defensive record. Uh, Chelsea only conceded two goals in 14 games and then conceded five in a game. Uh, absolutely astonishing. Obviously, it's the first defeat under Tuchel. And to get beat 5-2, despite playing with 10 men for a while, uh, was astonishing, really. Um, is there a chance Chelsea's bubble might burst? These things happen. I mean, I remember Oli. Obviously, everybody remembers Oli taking over United. Oli's at the wheel and, you know, winning so many games on the bounce and scoring plenty of goals. And once a game went wrong, it went, let's, let's be honest, it went catastrophically wrong for a while uh, before he had another another rise again, if you like. So, th th this could easily happen with Chelsea. Let's see, they've got Porto during the week in the, in the Champions League. I think they've been a little bit lucky in the draw, but uh, they're certainly going to have to play a lot better against Porto uh, than, than they did uh, did yesterday. So it could be the sign that's the sign that they're, that they're about to about to dip, but we'll we'll see. Um, City beat Leicester two 0 Obviously, Leicester uh, Leicester are a point behind us. So if we can win today, strengthen our grip. Like I say, we can go four points ahead of Leicester. Uh, fascinating that game for an hour. I really enjoyed it to be honest. Uh, Leicester operated with a with like a Christmas tree formation. They played with five at the back, um, although all bright and the, the right wing. It was really five at the back because they were pressed back so much. The two wing backs uh, had to play like defenders. They had Castagna as a left left wing back, and he is a full back. But they had uh, all bright and as a right as a right wing back. But he was forced for so far back. It was like a back five, and then just in front of that, they had the three midfield players. And just in front of that, they had Vardy and Ineacho, and they were literally shaped like a Christmas tree. Had tried to make City go round the outside all the time. It was a, it was a fascinating game, but City were too strong for them and ended up winning. Ended up winning two nil. Uh, didn't, it took it took them an hour to score. Uh, brilliant goal by Mendy as well. He took it superbly that that goal. Uh, but. Leicester losing, massive bonus for United. It doesn't matter to us really that City won. I'm not not uh, not interested in that now. We obviously we completely got no chance of catching City. So yeah, we wanted Leicester to get beat. Leicester are now a point behind us, and we've got to play today uh, to make it up to the same amount of games as, as Leicester have played. Um, what our last game was against Leicester, the cup tie when we got beat three one. What I when, when a lot of people misread me when I talk about us wanting to play a passing game, people think I, so I hear some people say, you know, he wants us to start playing sideways and backwards all the time. Nearly all your passes will be sideways and backwards. That's the nature of football. If you think about it, if you're going to play a forward pass, when you play a forward pass, it's pretty rare that another forward pass can follow it because the time, you know, you, you're going to run out of pitch before you know it. Once you play a forward pass, it's almost got to be that the next pass is a sideways pass or a backwards pass. So when people talk about sideways and backwards passing, all these best teams, they keep hold of the ball with lots of sideways and backwards passing. If, if a team like City have a, have a spell where they keep the ball, which everybody thinks is fantastic, by the way, the way they play. If they have a spell, which happens quite regularly, I think, with them, where they have maybe 30 passes, I think you'll probably find that about four or five of those passes are forward forward passes, and you know, and probably half of the rest are sideways passes, and half of them are, are backwards passes. You can't keep passing it forward. You're just going to run out of pitch. I know it's a bit of a, sound like a bit of a, tongue in cheek statement that but you are you can't just keep passing forward so when people say oh you want to pass it sideways and backwards all the time it's the only way you can pass it really you can't keep passing it forward 
You know, it's just it's just a ridiculous comment, really. And it's to be honest, it's a bit childish. You know, of course you've got to pass it sideways and backwards. If you keep passing it forwards, you know, people are going to be offside. And it, it just it just can't work like that. It just cannot work like that. So uh, anyway, but it was, it was a fascinating game. A lot of people are mad for us uh, to sign on Didi from Leicester. I watched him carefully. I've, obviously, I've seen him play plenty of times, but I, pe I paid particular attention to him uh, yesterday, and I thought he was absolutely superb. What a player he is. His, uh, his passing, his awareness, uh, his, his touch and his calmness around the edge of the box when surrounded by City players. And you're talking about Manchester City players here. Uh, and Didi really did have a have a quality game. He, 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 was, he was class. Uh, another thing that that, uh, that took me eye or took me ear, really, was uh, Fafana, the young centre-back. He's 20 years old. He's, he's obviously a quality player. He's playing regularly for Leicester. You know, Leicester are third in the table in the Premier League, which is supposed to be the best league in the world, according to most people. And when we played, uh, when we played Leicester in the cup the other week, I heard the commentator say that that he's, he's in is because they just had a, the European Championship, uh, the group stages. They just had the under twenty one uh, European Championship group stages. He was in the French squad. But not in the starting lineup. That's what they said. Uh, it doesn't get in the under twenty one squad. They said that when we were playing them the other week. Now they since then they've had that championship group stage, and they said last night that he got one game out of the three games in in those group stages as a right fullback. So you know he's, he's playing regularly for Leicester. He's twenty years of age. You know they're third in the Premier League, and he can't get in the French under twenty one squad, uh, under twenty one team. He is in the squad, but not in the team. And I found that very interesting, and it, it, you know, it makes me wonder. It makes me wonder what type of players uh, the French have got got coming through because he looks a he looks a class player to me, and it's I'm amazed that he doesn't get in the under twenty one team. Um, also, yesterday Leeds Leeds beat Sheffield United two one, and Liverpool won away at three 0 at Arsenal. Liverpool have climbed into fifth. Um, back in the because there was a there was a little spell where it looked like they'd be struggling for the top four Liverpool, but now they're looking they're looking ominous again, um, especially with Chelsea getting beat and Leicester getting beat and uh, maybe Leicester have still got a big enough gap. Leicester are still seven points in front of Liverpool. We're eight points in front of Liverpool, uh, but Chelsea in fourth uh, are only two points in front of Liverpool and with um with Chelsea losing five two yesterday. And Liverpool winning 3-0. There was a six-goal swing in one day. When people look at goal differences, um, you know, it's a big difference in one day. So suddenly, uh, you know, yesterday morning, Liverpool had a goal difference which was seven behind Chelsea's. And suddenly, it's only one behind Chelsea's. So that could be important in the end, especially there's only two points gap between them. So uh, Chelsea and Liverpool uh, look like they're scrapping, out, scrapping for that fourth spot. Other teams are still involved. West Ham are on 49 points, the same as Liverpool, and they've got a game in hand on them. They've got a fairly tough game this weekend, or West Ham, that are away to Wolves. But if they can win it, they get, in fact, if they could win it, they'd, they'd climb into fourth, West Ham. And uh, Spurs, similarly, Spurs are on, are on 48 points, and they've still got a play yet this weekend. And uh, the last team I would suggest in the table that have got any chance whatsoever... Look, Spurs, West Ham and Everton, I'm not saying they've got a good chance. I'm just saying you can't completely rule them out yet. Everton are on 46 points from 28 games. Uh, so they've got two games in hand on Chelsea, who are in fourth. If they won those two games in hand, they would go ahead of Chelsea. I don't expect them to do it, I really don't. But you've got to say that, you know, there's only. T it's not like they're in this position and we've only played 12 or 14 games. You know, there's only eight, uh, only 10 games to go. Uh, maybe less for some teams. It is less for some teams. So uh, you can't completely rule them out. But I would say this: I would say, obviously, City are going to win it. United, we're not nailed on to finish second, but I'd say we're nailed on to finish in the top four, or virtually nailed on to finish in the top four. And then I think there's one, two, three, four, five, five or or, or six teams for two spots. Really, I'll throw Leicester in the app with uh, with being in for one or two spots. Um, I do think we, obviously we're going to need some more points, and we've got we've still got some tricky fixtures. We've still got to play Spurs. We've still got to play Liverpool. We've still got to play Leicester. Um, we've got Wolves away and Villa away. No, they're not in the hunt, but they, you know they're not easy places to go. 
uh, this season. They're both decent teams. So we've got some tricky fixtures. So when we're looking at fixtures like Brighton at Old Trafford, we can't afford to slip up. It could be it could be so much more difficult picking up points from some of the other fixtures that we've got. Uh, you know, if we can win today, if we can win today, for example, we can go on to uh, on to 60 points. Uh, Liverpool uh, are on. Liverpool have played 30 games, by the way. I'm, I'm saying Liverpool because they're in fifth at the moment. They're the team that really the team that we need to be looking at. The team in fifth doesn't matter if we finish second. Really, it's about being in the top four. So Liverpool are in fifth. Uh, Liverpool at the minute are on 49. We're on 57. So we're eight points behind Liverpool. We've still got to play them. Once we've played today, we will have played the same amount of games. And, and I would suggest it, it, it's as important, it's so important, it's unbelievable, really. If we win, we will go 11 points in front of Liverpool. I would say that that will definitely do it, and we're not going to drop enough points for Liverpool. I'd have to win every game just to have a chance of catching us. Whereas, if we drop a point, drop points today, if Brighton were to snatch a draw, we move on to 58... Uh, Liverpool are on 49. They'd be nine behind us. We'd still, we'd still to play, still to play us. You know, if you were a Liverpool supporter, you'd be looking at it and thinking, well, if we beat United, it's only six points we've got to make up, and making up six points. I know it's nine, but they, they, they've obviously got to beat us to have any chance. That's a given. They've obviously got to do that. But you'd be looking at it and thinking it's only really six points to make up because we've got, you know, they've got to beat us anyway. So I think. If we win today, I would say that's the top four nailed on for us. If we don't win today, I would say there's still just a chink of light there for Liverpool even catching us. So it's a must-win game, I think, today. As I say, we've got some trickier fixtures coming up uh, than this one. So a uh, really important game, really looking forward to it. Team news. Um, obviously, we, we, we had a few injuries during, uh, not not during the international break, but just before the international break. Mark has pulled out of the England squad, uh, but he has been training. Uh, Mason pulled out of the under-21 squad. I really think that was a precaution, uh, uh, Mason pulling out of the under-21 squad. Um, but I don't fancy... I don't fancy Marcus to start today, and I think I'd be a bit surprised if Mason started as well. I found a couple of predicted uh, team lineups in, the, in different newspapers. I've just got two in front of me. The Evening Standard have suggested it's going to be Henderson, Wambasaka, Lindelof, Maguire, and Shaw, uh, McTominay, and Fred, uh, Bruno at number 10, and they've gone with Rashford, Cavani, and Pogba as, as a front three. Um, I forgot to mention Anthony Marshall when I was talking about the injuries. Obviously, he got a knock while playing for France. So, Anthony Marshall's definitely out of the equation. Um, so, they've gone with Rashford, Cavani, and Pogba as a front three because Pogba has played wide on the left a few times. So, he does count as a front three man the way, the way United line up when he plays in that position. Uh, and in the Daily Express... Uh, it's a similar team. It's a couple of changes in there. They've got Endo in goal. They've got wan Bailey, Maguire and Shaw. I think Lindelof did come drop out of the Sweden squad, didn't he, with his back again. But he, he misses a game and plays a game, misses a game and plays a game. That's the way it seems to be with Lindelof. I expect Lindelof to play myself. But the Express are saying Bailey will play. Then they're also going with McTominay and Fred. Obviously Bruno at 10. And then as a front three... They've got uh, Dan James, uh, Cavani and Pogba. And I'll be honest, I think that, that is what I think it'll be. I think it'll be Dan James, Cavani and Pogba, Matt Tomlin and Fred. I would go with, a, with, I think Lindelof will play. I think if, if the Express were to put Lindelof in Bailey's place, I would suggest that will be the lineup. I think Henderson, Wambasaka, Lindelof, Maguire and Shaw, Matt Tomlin and Fred, Bruno... Uh, James, Cavani and Pogba. That's the lineup that I expect to see starting. And, and uh, like I say, it really is an important three points. We can start to breathe a little bit more easily if we get those three points today. Um, so looking forward to that one. Uh, also last night, I mean, I've mentioned all the, uh, the the games that were played in the Premier League already. I watched, um, I didn't watch the Liverpool game at Arsenal. I watched a little bit of it. I was watching Inter Milan against Bologna. They were away to Bologna and they won 1-0. Um, they're looking like they've, they're red-hot favourites now Inter to clinch this title. They've not won it for years. Juventus have won the last the last nine titles on the bounce. Um, 
everybody, anyone who watches regularly know that I like to keep an eye, an eye on X-Reds and there's, there's nothing like watching Inter Milan for watching X-Reds. In that game yesterday, they won 1-0. It was a tough game. Lukaku uh, scored his 20th league goal of the season. He played the full game. Um, uh, Ashley Young started. They play, they play with three centre-backs and two wing-backs. Ashley Young recently has lost his place um, has lost his place in the side. He, he was playing up until up until January, and then he's he lost his place in the side. He's not been an automatic starter since the end of January. But yesterday he was back in again. Uh, he lost his place to Perisic, so you know he's a top player. I think they decided to go with more of a winger as the wing back instead of Ashley Young, who's been a full back for a few years now. So he lost his place to Perisic. There's no shame in that, I should say, and. Uh, Young played yesterday, Perisic wasn't available, I don't think, he wasn't even on the bench, and Young played for about 70 minutes. After about 70 minutes, he was replaced by Matteo Darmian. Uh, Matteo Darmian, I like Matteo Darmian, a lot of people at Old Trafford didn't, you know, fans didn't really rate him, I think he's a quality player. I've been having a look at Matteo Darmian, oh, also Alexis Sanchez came on, looked very sharp Sanchez, but for me, didn't really play well. Held on to the ball too long a few times, I thought, Sanchez. But uh, certainly looking sharp, though, he looks fit. Uh, Matteo Damian, yes, that's what I wanted to mention. He came on, he got he got uh, 20 minutes at the end of the game. They use him regularly as a, as a, a wing-back or a full-back uh, who comes on towards the end of games. He started a few games. But he's, he, he regularly comes on, they bring him on for 20 minutes. And last night they were under pressure against Bologna. Bologna was searching for an equaliser. Damian comes on, he's a, he really is, I think he's a quality player. He brought one ball down on his chest under a little bit of pressure and found an easy pass in field with his right foot. Then he moved into space and received it again and then passed it down the line on, on his with his left foot with a beautiful weight on it that got into out of trouble and... Uh, it makes me wonder about United's um, United's transfer policy at times. I mean, we sold Damian. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of homework on him. We sold Damian for about just over two million quid to Palmer a couple of seasons ago. He's thirty-one now, Damian. But at the time that we sold him, he'll have been he'll have been approaching twenty-nine. I think at the time we sold him, he'd have been approaching twenty-nine. But we then signed Alex Tellez, and I think Alex Tellez was was 28 when we signed him, or 27 at least. I think he was 28. Now, I know Damien's 31 now, but we sold a fullback who was about 28, 29 for £2 million, and we bought another fullback who was about 28 for £13 million. And when I watch him play, and I've seen Tellez often enough now, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not absolutely slating Tellez, but I'm telling you, hand on art. He's not a better player than Matteo Damien. I mean it. I see enough of Damien. I watch him playing for Inter Milan. I've seen enough of Tellez. And Matteo Damien is not a worse player than uh, than Alex Tellez. Not a chance. And while I was doing my own work, I thought, well, I knew that Damien had caps for Italy. I looked it up. He's got 36 caps for Italy. You know, they always say they know a thing or two about, about defending in Italy. He's got 36 caps for Italy. And what I also found, and I didn't know this, Alex Tellez has got an Italian passport. And Alex Tellez has made it widely known that he wanted to play for Italy. I think that might have been because he couldn't get in the Brazil team. But Italy never took took him up, you know, took up his offer, if you like, and included him in, in a squad. So Matteo Damian's got 36 caps for Italy. Tellez hasn't got a cap for Italy. And more recently now, he has had a call up from Brazil. He's now got four caps for Brazil. So, look, it doesn't prove anything, but it's at least interesting. Surely it's at least interesting. 36 caps... It's not four or five or eight caps and you're going, oh, you're not quite up to it. 36 caps, a decent amount of caps, you know, for a top nation. And they, funnily enough, this is something else I found out. He made his debut for Italy in the World Cup in Brazil against England. And they beat England 2-1, didn't they, in that World Cup? So, you know, Matteo Dami, none of that proves anything. But it does show that he's, let's put it this way, I rate Matteo Dami. I get lots of people on Twitter telling me, that he's no good. Well, he's been picked for Italy 36 times, and I checked this out by three different managers, uh, and then uh, Conte was one of those managers. Conte's now signed in for Inter Milan. He's only on loan at the moment. They've got a, 
I can't understand that either. He's only on loan. We sold him to Palmer uh, for about £2.2 2 million. Pound. He played 33 games last season for Palmer. So really, that's 33 league games. So really, that's an automatic choice in it. Everybody gets a rest now and again. It was an automatic choice for Palmer throughout last season. And I knew this had happened. I predicted that this would happen. Once you're back in the in the showcase, if you like, once you're back in the window, people see you playing more. So just by the fact that he was playing more and also playing in Italy, I fancied that one of the big clubs in Italy would take a chance on him again. I really did fancy that. So he played 33 games for Parma. Lo and behold, at the beginning of the next season, Inter have taken him. And Inter have taken him on loan with a view to buying him for, for £2 million. Whether they'll buy him or not, I don't know. He's 31 now. I don't understand the point in, in that. He's 32 in December. But um, he played 33 games for Palmer last season. And then the transfer window closes just after the season started. So this season he's played three games for Palmer. I've not been able to check this, but they must have only played three games. He, he, he finishes so quickly at the start of the season. So it strikes me that he was in Palmer's team all the time last season. He, he was in the team this season, and yet then they've let him go on loan to, to Inter. I think Inter must have paid them. I don't, I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. If he was with Palmer, he would still be in Palmer's team. But uh, he's getting plenty of game time for Inter. He's, he's got uh, he's played 18 league games. He's, he's played 25 games altogether. Some a, a lot of them will be substitute appearances. It doesn't give you that information on Wikipedia. It just gives you the appearances. Uh, and he scored a couple of goals for Inter as well. So I think uh, I think Matteo Damian was um, was a top player when he played. I thought he was a really good player. Didn't get enough game time, and I, and I still think he'd be perfectly fine for us as cover. He also plays right back. And left back, unlike Tellez, who only only plays left back. And if I, from what I've seen of both players, if I had to choose between one and the other, I would prefer Matteo Damian. I really would. He looks, he looks top, he looks top draw to me. In that table, um, Inter, I've got sixty eight points now, and uh, the nearest rivals both drop points this this weekend. AC Milan drew. And, and Juventus only drew. Uh, Juvent uh, uh, AC Milan are on 60, so they're eight points behind, but Inter have got a game in hand on them. And Juventus have dropped slipped to fourth um, on 56 points. Uh, they're, they're on the same games, though, but they're 12 points behind now, so Ju Juventus are not going to catch them. 12 points is too much to make up, I'm so certain of that. Interestingly, Juventus, who've won the title nine, nine times on the bounce, uh, are on level points and level games with Napoli, who are, who are in fifth. Um, could the unthinkable happen? Could Juventus win the title nine times on the bounce and this season actually slip out of the top four race? Uh, or slip out of the top four, I should say, and not not even qualify for the Champions League? That would be in interesting to see if that happens. Um, back to the, the Premier League. Other games today, Southampton v Burnley is a midday kickoff. That's on Sky Sports' main event. Uh, Newcastle v Spurs, five past two. That's an interesting one for us, Spurs. Uh, in fact, let's go back to the to the table. Um, Spurs are on forty eight points. Um, they are nine point. We're nine points in front of Spurs, and we play Spurs next week. If Spurs win today, we'll be six points in front of them as we. Kick off our game, so that's an interesting game. Now it'll be, it could, you know, it'd be handy for United if Spurs drop points there. So that'll be an interesting watch. Uh, Newcastle v Spurs, five past two, Sky Sports main event, and then uh, Villa Villa v Fulham at four thirty, also on Sky, and then and then our game at seven thirty is the first game that's on BT Sports. So that's on BT One, uh, BT Sports One at seven thirty kickoff. Like I say, really important game. I would suggest it's that important that if we win today, I would absolutely say that our top four spot is now done and dusted. If we don't win today, I would say there's a chink of light for Liverpool who are in fifth, perhaps catching us. So it's a really important game. Got to win it. Really looking forward to it. I hope you've enjoyed that show. If you've enjoyed it, please tell all your friends. Please subscribe. If you didn't enjoy it, don't tell anybody, keep stumped.